Hello, my friends. We're back for week six, day two. It is Tuesday, and we're actually going to um, review our memory verse first. So what I'm going to do, remember, your verse is split into two parts. You had a question and you have the answer. So let's look at the first part. It is Psalm 2410. Who is this king of glory? Who is this king of glory? That's the question that we ask. And the answer is, who? The Lord Almighty. He is the king of glory. Psalm 2410. So let's do that again. You ready? You're going to ask the question this time. Where do we find our memory verse? Psalm 2410. Ask me the question. What is it? Who is this king of glory? And the answer, what was the answer? The Lord Almighty, he is the king of glory. Psalm 2410. All right, now I'm going to ask you the question and you tell me the answer. So the question is, Psalm 2410, who is this king of glory? What's the answer? The Lord Almighty, he is the king of glory. Psalm 2410. 10. And what a cool title, the King of Glory. Like not just the King, but the King of Glory. Glory. One time I heard someone tell me, um, I heard a, a, a teacher tell me that um, glory is if you take all of God's attributes, all of the good things about God, that he's the peacemaker, that he's faithful, that he's true, that he's loving, that he's gracious, that he's merciful, all those wonderful things about God, that he's all powerful and all omnipotent and omnipresent, if you take all of those good things about him and you put them all in a bag, that is what God's glory is. It's all the good things about him. So he's not just the king, but he's the king of glory because he has all of those attributes that tell us about him. And that's how we know him. And that's how we relate to him because we, we know those things about him. So um, today's Bible story is based out of the book of Revelation. And Revelation is the very last book of the Bible. It's at the very end of your Bible. And our story, um, our what we're gonna talk, what you're gonna learn about is actually the end of the end of the Bible. It's the last three chapters of Revelation, chapter 20, 21, and 22. Now, this book, I'm gonna be honest with you when I tell you about Revelation, that it's kind of confusing to me. And there's a lot of really cool things in it, but there's a lot that it's kind of hard for our minds to understand. And Revelation was actually written um, because um, by John, the disciple John, he actually was um, hated because he, you know, was a follower of Jesus and was telling people about Jesus. And then when he was an old man, he actually got um, sent away to this island called Patmos. And on the island of Patmos, God appears, an angel appears to John and tells him through the angel, um, God shows John what is going to happen um, when Jesus returns, okay? And so there's a lot in it that is kind of confusing. And even as a grown-up, and even as someone who's studied the Bible a lot, a lot of it is still confusing to me. And so um, I actually found a video, that I'm, two videos that I want you to watch for today. And they kind of give um, just a good, like, simple um, explanation for what you're going to be, what you would read in those chapters. And um, it is really cool because the Bible is full of surprises and there are things that are that are coming when we belong to Jesus and we um, are following him one day we're gonna be with him and one day Jesus is gonna return to earth and he's gonna make a new earth and it's gonna be perfect and it's going to be beautiful more beautiful than you we could ever we can't even imagine how beautiful it's going to be all right and so that's what um, these chapters talk about of what that that place is going to look like and so I thought these videos would be a good um, thing for you guys to watch and it kind of gave a good um, good good way to explain it so I'm gonna let you make sure you go to the link um, on the website and it has the two videos that you're gonna watch and when you're done you are actually going to 
um, complete you're going to complete Bible Workbook page 185, which you will need. It's a Bible review, so you will need a Bible with the table of contents to help you with that page because it's practicing putting your books of the Bible in order. And then on page 186, you talk about the King of Glory, and then you also talk about what the what our earth looks like and what the new earth looks like that, that Jesus is going to recreate when he returns, okay? So... Um, some pretty cool things and some pretty cool promises that give us hope about what is to come when we believe and when we trust in him. Okay, so don't forget to watch those videos and I will check you guys tomorrow. Um, actually, Wednesday will be Worship Wednesday. So I will see you back on Thursday for Bible. Okay, bye guys. All right, we are back for um, week six. It is Tuesday, math, and we are working on lesson 150, page 299 and 300. So I want you to go ahead and pull that math sheet out and have it ready um, before we, um, so when we get started, you'll have it. Remember, you can always press pause. You can always go get it. You can always, if it takes you a little longer to work a problem, you can always press pause and then jump back in with this, okay? So yesterday we talked about subtracting dollars and cents, right? And um, we talked about how when you're subtracting dollars and cents from dollars and cents, you do it the exact same way that you would do um, normal numbers. The only difference is, is you have that teeny tiny little dot there that separates your dollars and cents. Do you remember what that, do you remember what that dot is called? It's not a period. In math, it's called a decimal point. And so when you have a decimal point, remember, that decimal point doesn't move places. It comes, it, you drop it straight down. Now, yesterday's problems, you they gave you the numbers, the dollars and cents to subtract. Well, today's in today's lesson, they're giving you the dollars and cents, but they're writing it out and having you figure out the amount and then subtract it. So there's really two steps to it. So what I want you to do is, I, you see over here how I drew, um, that I wrote this? I want you to get a piece of paper or index card or just a post-it note, whatever you can find, or just a scratch piece of paper, press pause and go grab one. And what I want you to do is I want you to write this out to the side because you're gonna reference it often. If, you, um, if you're pretty good with money and you know your amounts and your dollars, in your coins and how and how to count them pretty good, then you, you don't have to write it, I guess, but I would suggest that everybody do it. If we were at school, I would give you, um, you know, manipulatives or, or fake money to do, and that would help you, but since we're at home and, you know, it's kind of hard, I'm just gonna let you, this is gonna kind of be like your little help, all right? So we have a quarter, how much is a quarter worth? 25 cents, so let's count our quarters. 25, 50, 75 a dollar, okay? And then we keep going, all right? A dime is worth how much? 10 cents, we count by tens, right? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 a dollar, all right? A nickel is worth how much? Five cents, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and so on and so on and so on. All right, and then our penny, we know we count by ones. So press pause, get this copied on your, on your um, like scratch piece of paper, just so you can reference it. Um, and we're gonna use that to solve our problems, okay? So I'm looking at page 300. We're gonna work on this together. Look at number one. So remember, we're gonna do this in two steps. We're going to, um, Figure out our amounts, and then we're going to subtract them. So let's read our problem to help us figure out our amounts. And you have a little box out to the side of your paper. Do you see that? Mine has the answer in it. But you that's where you're going to do your, your work. It's called your workspace. So that's where you're going to do your work. So let's look. Sophia has two $1 bills three quarters and one nickel. How much money does she have? So let's figure out how much she has. She has two $1 bills. So how many dollars does she have? She has two dollars. So we're gonna go ahead and put our decimal point 
And now we're gonna figure out how much change she has. Three quarters and one nickel, okay? If you want to, you could draw out three little quarters and one nickel. Three quarters. And one nickel. So I put three quarters with 25 in them and one nickel. So 25, 50, 75 plus five is what? 80. So she has $2.80. Do you have $2.80 in your box, in your workspace? Now, let's keep going. Oh, let's put our dollar sign out there. If she buys a candy bar, I'm looking back at my problem. If she buys a candy bar for 95 cents, how much change will she get back? Okay, so this is how much money she has, $2.80. She's buying a candy bar for 95 cents. So if she's giving 95 cents of her money away, we're going to subtract. So we're going to subtract 95 cents. So do we have any dollars? Nope, just cents. So we're going to put 95 cents. So notice when I write my problem, I line my decimal points up, okay, one under the other one. And then I put my numbers where they're supposed to go. I don't have any dollars here. That's why I have a space. It, her candy bar only costs 95 cents. So I could draw a little zero there if I needed if I needed to, if I wanted to. Now it says how much, the question asks, how much change will she get back? So remember, when we're looking for change, we're finding the difference, all right? So we're going to subtract. So let's subtract. You're gonna do this just like you did yesterday. So we're gonna start zero minus five. Can't do it. I gotta go borrow. Eight becomes a what? Seven. Zero becomes a what? 10. Now I can subtract. 10 minus five is five. Now I go over here, seven minus nine. Can I do it? Nope, so I gotta go borrow. The two becomes a one, and the seven now becomes a what? A 17. 17 minus nine is what? Ooh, that's a big one. Eight. I bring my decimal point straight down and now I subtract one minus zero, and what is one minus zero? One. So how much money does Sophia have left? She has $1.85. So you need to write, so you should have gotten that when you subtracted. So take your answer and make sure you rewrite it in that blank, okay? So do you see how we did this in two steps? First, we had to find the amount that she had using our, using our coins that we drew. And then once we found the amount, we took what they gave us in the problem that she spent 95 cents and we subtracted and found our answer. So that's what you're doing. The same thing as yesterday, except yesterday they gave you the starting amount. Today, they're asking you to figure that out. So let's do another one. Marco, number two, use your workspace box. Marco wants to buy a walking stick that costs $10.28. He has one $5 bill and five $1 bills, two quarters, two dimes, and three nickels. How much money does he have? Well, we've got to go back because the first question is asking you. We're not subtracting anything yet. They want to know how much money does he have? So let's go back up in the story and let's see how much he has. It says he has one $5 bill, five $1 bills, okay? And now he has two quarters. So how much is a quarter? 25 cents. He has two dimes, a dime is worth 10. He has three nickels. 
So we're trying to figure out how much Marco has first. So if I were you, I wouldn't do this in my box. I would do this maybe out to the side, okay? Or wherever you can find room on your page. So let's see how much Marco has. Let's count our bills first. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So he has ten dollars. So I'm going to put my decimal point. And now I've got to figure out how much change he has. So let's start with the highest value first. 25, 50. Then I go to my tens. 60, 70. Then I go to my fives. 75, 80, 85. So he has 85 cents. So he has $10.85. Now, he wants to buy a walking, let's go back to the story problem. He wants to buy a walking stick that costs $10.28. And they want to know how much change he'll get back. So I'm going to erase this. How much did he have? $10.85. You wrote that in your first blank. And his walking stick costs $10.28. And they want to know how much change will he get back. So we're looking for the difference. So we're going to subtract. Okay. So we're going to subtract just like what we've been doing. Start on the right side. Five minus eight. Can't do it. Borrow from our neighbor. Seven. The five becomes a 15. 15 minus eight is what? Seven. Seven minus two. I can do it. Is what? Five. Now I bring my decimal point straight down. Zero minus zero is zero. Zero, one minus one is one. Do I have to put these zeros there? No. But remember right there at the front, you don't need to put them. So how much change did he have left? He only got, he only got 57 cents back. So you can write 57 cents like this. $0.57, or you could write $0.57 cents like this, okay, either way, in your blank. All right, so in order to do these problems, you have to know your money, and I know that some of you are still struggling with that, and that's okay. We're going to keep working on it, but you have to know your coins and their values, okay? If we were in class, we have that chart up, you know, that we can reference easily, but, so that's why I ask you to put that um, beside you so you can reference it. So you're going to use your knowledge of coins to figure out the amount. And then once you figure out the amount, then you're going to subtract and find the difference. Okay. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to finish on number three. You're going to write two multiplication facts and two division facts using these numbers. Okay. So if you have... 2, 5, and 10. It's kind of like you're making a fat family, right? If you have 2, 5, and 10, you can only use these numbers. Whoops. Well, not this penny is not moving very hard. Okay, so you can only use those two numbers. So when we multiply, what number, what two numbers could we multiply and get the third number? Well, we know we can multiply two times five and get 10. Now remember, when we multiply, it's just like adding that we can swap the, we can swap the factors around, okay? When we multiply, our factors can switch places and our product stays the same, okay? So, Instead of 2 times 5 equals 10, I could do 5 times 2 equals 10. All right, now, now we're to division. Okay, division works kind of like subtraction. When you divide, your biggest number has to be first. So what's our biggest number here? 10, okay? That's called our dividend, actually. Our dividend. Now, one of these numbers is going to be our divisor, because that's what we're dividing it by. So 10 divided by what? You want to do 2? Okay, 10 divided by 2 equals what? 5. 
Now, when we divide again, we our 10 has to stay first. He's big and bossy, he has to be first. Now, we can swap our divisor, and instead of doing two, we can do five, and our quotient, or our answer, would be what this time? Two, okay? So remember, it kind of works like addition and subtraction as far as making fat families that when you add, they, these numbers can switch. When you subtract or divide, the big bossy number has to go first, okay? So you're going to complete the next one by yourself using 3, 4, and 12, okay? I think you can do that. And then you're going to complete page 299. 299 has some more practice with subtracting money amounts, all right? And it also has some, some practice with division and multiplication and reading a um, bar graph, okay? So I want you to do page 299, and I also want you to do page uh, speed drill number two today, okay? And I will see you guys tomorrow. All right. All right, we are back for Tuesday, week six, and we are on page, um, lesson, I'm sorry, lesson 151, and we are on page 301 and 302. Now, today we're going to talk a little bit about putting words in alphabetical order, and I know that you have done this skill before, so we're not, we're just, this will, will be like a review for you. When you put words in alphabetical order, you do exactly what it, you say. You put words in the order of the alphabet. Now, when you put words in the order of the alphabet, you have to use, you start with the first letter in the word, okay? You're going to start with the first letter in the word. So let's look at, I wrote three Three words up here. I have fish, elephant, and monkey. Okay. Now, if I wanted to put these words in alphabetical order, I'm going to look at the first letter of each word. So I'm going to underline them because it helps me to see. All right. And then I'm going to think about the alphabet. Okay. On your paper, on page 301, it actually has the alphabet written there for you. So if you need it to reference, you can. Or you can just say the alphabet in your head. So let's look at these three letters, F, E, and M. What letter comes first in the alphabet of these three letters? Well, let's think. A, B, C, D, E. So E is gonna come first. So elephant, would be the first word, okay? Now, what would be the next word? A, B, C, D, E, F. Fish would come next. It would be the second word. And we know that M, monkey, would be third. All right, so you always look at the first letter, all right? So we're going to do this at the bottom I mean, not at the bottom, on your paper, look at number one. It says write each group of words in ABC order. I, you're gonna actually rewrite them in alphabetical order, but I just wrote them on numbers beside. So I'll do this one with you. So look at your, look at your words. You have, read these words with me, voice, note, Sister. Okay, if we're putting them in alphabetical order, we are looking at what letter in that word? Just the first letter. So underline the first letter in every word. Okay. Now, let's go through our alphabet. You can use your alphabet at the top of your paper to help you, but let, or you can say it in your head, however you want to do it. And let's see which letter would be first, V, N, or S. Well, let's think. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, don't have any, I, J, K, L, M, N. Oh, I've got an N. So we know that what word is first? Note. So on that first blank, I'm going to write the word note. Now, so I use note. So which one would be next? Well, let's keep going. N O P Q R S. 
So which word is going to be next? Sister. And we know that voice would be what? Last, okay? So we put them in alphabetical order according to the first letter in each word. You're going to do that for the rest of those words on number one, rest of those groups of words on number one, okay? On number two, you're going to circle the word that comes first in between those two words in alphabetical order. So look at the first letter of the word, and so let's look at the first one on number two. You have noon and you have sun. Underline the first letter in each of those words. Noon and sun. Okay, noon and sun. All right, so we're gonna underline these two letters. Now, if I look in the alphabet, which letter comes first, N or S? Well, I'm gonna look at my alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N. N comes first, so I would circle noon because it's the first word out of these two, okay? Look at the next one, ball, X. Underline your first letter. Well, that's easy. A and then B. So what is first, A or B? Definitely A. So we're gonna circle X. All right, you're gonna finish that on number two. I'm gonna let you do the rest by yourself. Now, look at the next one. Number three is says a dictionary is a book that tells about words. The words are in alphabetical order. Color the circle next to the word that would come first in the dictionary. You're not gonna do this any differently than what you just did, except instead of circling the letter, you're going to just fill in, I mean, circling the word, you're going to just fill in the bubble, okay? You're not gonna do it any differently. You're gonna underline that first letter in each word and determine which, ones comes, which one comes first, and then you're going to fill in the bubble next to that one. So you can go back and finish one, two, and three. Look at your dictation. Look at your dictation at the bottom. I'm going to give you a sentence and I want you to copy it. Here we go. Not copy it, write it, sorry. Jan and I can't go to the party. Jan and I can't go to the party. And I'm gonna get mine written while you're writing yours and then we'll check it. Okay, let's look at our sentence. Jan and I can't go to the party. Let's look at party. Now, let's look at party. Do we have any special sounds in party? Yes, we have R in stars and we have E in baby there. Party, did you get party right? Now. Which one of these words in your sentence is a contraction? Can you circle that word? Which one is a contraction? Which word is a contraction, boys and girls? <gasps> can't, very good. You should have circled can't. What two words make up can't? What two words can I use that mean the same as can't? Can and not, very good, can and not. All right, so what you're gonna do on number I mean, you're gonna finish page 301, what we just did, and then you're gonna do page 302. Now, on page 302, you're going to review your adverbs. Remember, adverbs answer how about a verb, okay? They answer how about a verb. So they've given you, they've given you your verbs in your paragraph on page 302. They're written in green. 
you're going to find the adverbs and you're going to, if you want to, you can circle the adverb and then draw a line to the verb that it answers the question how about, okay? So you're gonna do that. And then on number two, it says write an adjective in each blank that describes the red noun. So let's look at it. Here is an amazing tent, okay? So tent was your noun. What word did they use to describe tent? They picked amazing, okay? The next one is doors. You're going to find a word that an adjective that would tell about what kind of doors, all right? And you're gonna finish that on the bottom and then you can draw a picture of your tent. When you use all those colorful adjectives to describe it, you can draw a picture in the box, okay? Good job today on alphabetical order and we will continue with phonics tomorrow.